Hi everyone and welcome back to our IK mini series. This series was voted on by my patrons and YouTube members, so thank you for those who have voted for this series. In this episode, we'll continue working on our foot placement for the IK. Uh, in the last episode, we've done some of the basic calculations to work out the traces for each foot, as you can see there. So now we're going to use that data to reposition each foot. So to do that, we need to go into the animation blueprint. So let's find that. And in here, we need to get the data and plug it into some nodes in our animation graph. So first thing, let's get that data. Go to your event graph. And at the start of this, we're going to change the start of this to be a bit nicer. Um, so let's, after we've got the try get pawn owner is valid, we can go from there and cast to third person character. Plug that into is valid. And after that, we're going to get as third person character and promote that to a variable. And we'll call this one my player pawn. And the reason why I'm doing that is because we need the exact reference to the player, but I only really want to do it once. Um, so I've done it once here. So to stop me from doing it again, what I'm going to do is try to get pawn out, it's going to go to is valid. And then before we go to the cast, we're going to do a my player pawn, get, right click, convert to validate get. And now we can plug in the rest. So is not valid will go into the cast. And the is valid will go to the rest of it. So we will plug that in to here to carry on the code. So all we've done there was just get access to the player's pawn in a nice easy manner. So if you want, rather than dragging these blue lines across the whole entire thing, we can just drag in the player pawn instead. As that's doing exactly the same thing. It just looks a bit neater. Okay, so um, that's it for here. So at the end, we need to actually get this data from the offsets. So on the variables, we're going to go new variable and we want to store the IK offset. So IK left foot offset. I would call it effector, sorry, effector. And this will be a uh, vector. And we'll do exactly the same thing, but this time for right foot. So IK right foot effector. And we're going to drag those out. So left foot effector, we're going to go set. And we're going to drag my player pawn out. Should get. And from there, we're going to get IK left foot offset. So now we've got this offset, we need to apply it to our effector. Now remember when we looked at our skeleton and the sockets, noted the direction of the up direction for each uh, socket. So here is the positive in the X for the left socket and for the right socket is the negative in the X axis. So in the blueprint for left here, we need to put in the X coordinate. So I'm going to split that and put in the X. Now for right though, we're going to split that again, but this time we're going to multiply the offset by minus one. And we're doing that because our right socket is upside down essentially. So we looked at a skeleton, you see the X direction is pointing down, we want it to go up, so times it by the minus one and that'll flip it. Okay, so there's our effector data stored. Hit compile. Next, we need to actually now use this data to affect the animation. So go to the animation graph, and we're going to use it on the state machine here. We can do it here, or you can do it actually inside the state machine. Totally up to you, but we'll do it here for ease, uh, ease of use and visibility, I guess. So we need to use a node called Two Bone IK. Now there are other IK nodes out there that will do legs, but I wanted to show you this one as it is the most um, clear to show what is going on with the IKs. So here we've got an effector location and joint target location. I explained these in some detail in the first episode of IKs. So if you haven't watched that, check that out where I explain how IKs work. But we've got an effector location, which is where the foot needs to be. 
and the joint target location is where the joint needs to point towards. So that'd be like where the knee is pointing. So when I connect the state machine to this, you'll see it converts it from component to local. Sorry, local to component rather. And if I do it back, you can see we got component to local. Okay, so they're fine. They come up automatically. But essentially, the why it's doing that is because when we do animations, they are local animations. They stay within the thing. But on the IKs, they are based per bone and essentially a component. So you need to affect the component. So you're converting the animation focus onto the component section. So we actually need two of these. We need one for left, one for uh, right. So we need two of them. Okay, so let's focus on the first one. So the first one, when you click on it, go to the details panel, and you'll see IK bone, and you want to choose the left foot. So foot, uh, left. Then you scroll down, and you'll see effect a location space. You want to change that to bone space. Now bone space means it will use its own reference and relative to its own bones when we tell it what to do, uh, which makes it a bit easier when working with the kind of data we're giving it. So once we've done that, we're going to go down to effect a target, click on this and change it to foot L. Okay, so now we need to plug in our data, so effect a location, which we've got down here in our variable list. So drag that in, uh, here we go. Now you want to do the exactly same thing, but this time for the right foot. So let's change IK bone here to right foot. Then we go down to component space to bone space for the effector. Change the effector target to the right foot and then plug in your data into it. Excellent. Hit compile and now let's play it and have a look what's going on. Okay, so now you see where the knees go buckled in, <laughs> like in a weird fashion. Uh, that is because the joint target location is set to zero, 0, So basically the knees are pointing to zero, zero, 0, of the uh, of the skeleton, which isn't correct. Okay, so let's go into our joint target locations here. And for each one, it's going to be slightly different. But essentially, if I click on this one here, the joint target location, this little gizmo you see at the bottom here in between his feet. So... I've, I've been playing around with the figures, so I know what figures would be good to put in here. But obviously, this is a lot of trial and error to figure out what would be good for you. So here we can go 15 in the X and moves it more towards in line with the foot there. Then Y, we're going to bring it out quite far. I'm going to put it in 200. And then we're going to lift it up in the air by 30. Uh, maybe a bit more. Let's go... 40. Okay, so that's that leg. Now we go to the other leg. And again, looking at the node here, we can see what's going on here. So the X location, we're going to move it that way to the left here. So that would be negative 15. Then we're going to go 200 out again. And then the Z, same as the other one, 40. Hit compile. And now when we play it, the knees should not look so weird. Okay, so you see it looks fine on the flat floor, but if we start going up, you'll start noticing some slight changes. Okay, but these changes aren't good enough because of one issue, and that is because our capsule is rising the mesh at all times. So you're only going to notice it on very subtle differences between the mesh sticking out and the of the capsule than the actual capsule itself. In other words. We need to fix the mesh from doing that. Uh, so what we need to actually do is change it to be more realistic in the fact that what you do when you walk is that your hips go, they drop down to the lowest point. So your the foot that's lowest, your hips will displace down to match that. So we're going to move the whole mesh down outside of the capsule by a, a small amount for each foot we move forwards. So let's go through how we actually achieve that. So to do that, we need to go back to our player blueprint. So we've got left foot trace, we've got right foot trace. We now need to use this out hit location for each of these functions to calculate which one we need to, uh, to calculate the distance, sorry, between each um, position. So we're gonna drag out hit location from this one at the end here 
do minus vector and we want to drag in the other out it location as the other vector we're taking away so we're going to get difference between those two locations we're then going to right click on that and split that because we're only interested in the height of it so we're going to use the z-axis and the z-axis we're going to do absolute now what absolute does it takes it gets basically ignores the sign of the number so if we take things away it could turn into a negative number it could turn into a positive number we want to ignore all that and make it all positive that's what absolute does next we need to do is we need to multiply that by the average so we're going to multiply and the reason why we're doing this is because we need to find the halfway point between these two so it sort of averages the hip out between the two of them so we're going to do minus 0.5 so 0.5 gives us the middle ground between the two points the negative part will make it lower so it actually lowers the hip rather than raises the hip so we're going to use that figure there and then we're going to promote that final figure to a variable so drag this out promote to variable and that is going to be hip uh, we'll do ik hip offset so now we've got this offset what that's going to do is it's going to lower the body well once we put in the code it's going to lower the body out of the mesh out of the uh, capsule so let's go back to our animation graph and in between the last two bone IK and the component to, to components the local node we're going to move that across and we're going to do a transform modify bone so this simply just transforms a bone now when you click on it you can choose what bone you want it to modify so we can go to the right hand side bone to modify change that to pelvis and then you'll see translation rotation and scale as your options and it says translation mode ignore or and uh, space you want to translate it in so for translation only we're not, we're not fussed about rotation or scale on this one the translation mode for this is going to be changed from ignore to add to existing okay so we're making a, a we're, we're adding and taking away a value basically and we'll leave it as component space for now i think we leave it as component space we'll double check that later and now we just need to put in a value into the translation so what we're going to do is take our ik hip offset from our player character and plug it in here so back to the event graph of your animation blueprint dragging my player point out again and from there get ik hip offset and we're going to promote that to a variable ik hip offset Plugging that in like so. So now go back to your animation graph, drag out your IK hip offset, choose get, and then we're going to split the translation because again we're only affecting the z axis. So drag that into the z axis. With that done, I did notice one error. Go back to your event graph, and we had the left foot offset going into the correct one here, but we have accidentally put it, well, I've accidentally put it through into the right foot one as well, which is obviously incorrect. So let's disconnect that and let's get the IK right offset and plug that in. Okay, so let's test this out. So you can run around and if you have a look when we go up the stairs, you'll notice some changes happening. So you see the foot goes down for the forward foot there but you see the right the other foot that's maybe risen up has clipped through the floor and you'll see that again more on the ramps as well so the bottom foot is correct but the one that's forward the one that's higher up is incorrect so what's actually happening there well remember we rose the or sorry lowered the whole entire mesh that means actually lowering the feet as well so what we need to do is offset the feet so go into your uh third person character and go to the IK foot trace and we'll take the Z axis value that we're outputting here and we're going to take away the hip offset and we're taking away because it's already a negative so if you minus a negative it actually increases it so this is going to increase its height a little bit by the offset so now will fix the slight differences between our feet and there you can see we've got one foot at the bottom one foot on the top and on the ramps 
there you go okay and that's basically it we have ik foot placement there's a few things we want to fix so the first thing we're going to fix in the next part is this clip here so if i my capsule you can see is standing on the edge but my character's fallen so we're going to fix that and also we're going to improve the smoothing between the ik animations because you can see it's a bit juddery here um, and you've got weird leg, leg issues and um, so we're gonna make it a bit smoother in the transitions make it look a bit more natural so join us the next part where we bug fix those issues and just tidy up our ik foot placement thank you so much for all the patrons for supporting me uh, and the channel so thank you again for your uh, donations and your support if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and if you have any comments queries or suggestions for future content leave a comment below thanks again for watching and i'll see you all next time Bye bye